Good afternoon, friends. This video on one of the landmark judgment by Honorable Supreme Court, upholding the judgment of Gujarat High Court, where the IGST can be levied on ocean freight on transportation of goods by vessel under RCM reverse charge method in the hands of importer of goods. Dispute and fact of the case. In case of CIF import, cost insurance freight import, ocean freight component is paid by foreign exporter to foreign shipping line. Now this freight component is included in transaction value for discharging the custom duty including IGST. And department has issued, government has issued the impugn notification 10 oblique 2017 under IGST, whereby deeming fiction they have said importer is a deemed recipient of supply of goods by any person in non taxable territory by vessel. So by deeming fiction, they have said importer is a recipient and liable for RCM method, reverse charge method for discharging GST on ocean freight. Redbit notification number 8 oblique 2017 under IGST, which is uh, IGST rate prescribed under this notification. And the dispute watch. This importer is saying that I have already discharged custom duty including IGST on a transaction value wherein freight component was built in. So I have already discharged IGST on that ocean freight component. Do I again require to pay IGST on ocean freight when I have already discharged custom duty including IGST on import of goods. This is the moot question. If it is the case, then it amount to be double taxation. The, the concept of composite supply and composite supply means two or more taxable supply naturally bundled in conjunction with each other. So that would be taxable on the basis of principal supply. So here principal supply would be supply of goods. Freight is being included, ancillary. And on that import of goods, importer has already paid custom duty, including IGST. So if this IGST is being demanded, on that ocean freight, then it is in contradiction of the concept of composite supply. Second point. Third point, whether such notification are not beyond the provision of the Act. When we look at the IGST Act, read with section 5, subsection 1, section 5, subsection 3, section 5, subsection 4 of IGST Act. What are the department argument? What department argued in this case? Department is saying that whatever custom duty including IGST which importer is paying it is under custom under section 3 subsection 7 and under section 3 subsection 8 of custom tariff act which is independent of IGST which is levied on ocean freight under RCM. So these are two different levy. Hence there is no question of composite supply, second argument. And department further saying that if importer paying IGST on ocean freight, then credit of the same would be available to the importer. Where is the problem? Look at from the taxpayer perspective who is the importer 
and he's saying if you demand IGST on ocean freight which is already included in transaction value for discharging custom duty including IGST then it will amount to be a double taxation when the department is saying credit is available what happened when importer is engaged in exempt supplies then credit is not available third there may be a case of accumulation of credit in the hands of importer if he is being asked to discharge IGST on ocean freight under RCM there may be a case so argument of credit available is not a logical argument and since it is double taxation this is what being presented by the taxpayer before the honorable court and there the concept of composite supply which is there under GST law under section 2 subsection 30 of CGST act their concept is existing is it not violation of the concept of composite supply two or more taxable supply supply of goods including transportation of goods and overall value and price is being charged CIF composite supply two or more taxable supply in conjunction with each other naturally bundle then that would be taxable on the basis of principal supply which is supply of goods and on that IGST is being paid so is it not the contradiction and violation of composite supply concept these are the point put forth and what department further argued in this case department they have said this notification which is being debated by the taxpayer 10 oblique 2017 read with 8 oblique 2017 under IGST are being issued in exercise in exercise of power given to the union government under section 5 subsection 3 and section 5 subsection 4 read with section 24 subsection Roman 3 of CGST Act so they are saying and these notifications are being issued on recommendation of GST council. So they are saying these notifications are having vetting as recommended by GST council. What is being held by Honorable Gujarat High Court and what is being upheld by Honorable Supreme Court. Honorable Supreme Court has agreed on principle whatever decided by Honorable Gujarat High Court in the case of Mohit Minerals Private Limited. That when CIF cost insurance freight import and freight component is included in transaction value for discharging custom duty including IGST and again if you demand IGST on ocean freight that is amounting to double taxation you have already levied the tax at the time of import of goods and creating deeming fiction that importer is recipient of supply of goods by any person in non-taxable territory by vessel this deeming fiction is contradiction he is not the recipient. Who is recipient? Foreign shipping company providing services to foreign exporter, foreign supplier. He is recipient. He is liable to pay consideration, ocean freight. And he has paid the consideration to the foreign shipping line. So creating deeming fiction is a contradiction. And that is what this is impugn notification 10 oblique 2017 held unconstitutional and ultra bias the provision of IGST Act. In this judgment the important aspect which has come and which is worth to note that department has argued that these notifications are being issued on the recommendation of GST Council. So what is this GST Council we all know that article 279A of the constitution has uh, 
created this constitutional body which is consists of center and state center is having one third power all the state are having two third power and they are allowed to decide any issue by three fourth majority till date we have seen that they are deciding everything by way of consensus except lottery matter so whether this recommendation which is made by gst council is really binding for the parliament and state legislature when we have seen article 246a permitting to both parliament and state legislature to legislate the gst law these are the point discussed and some observation made by honorable supreme court i am just reading out the summary of that operative part of supreme court judgment as such and a brief paper one page of paper is being prepared which is there in your description box which you can download to understand and digest what are the mood point what is being debated and what is being held so i'm reading out what is stated by honorable supreme court what is the binding precedent of recommendation of gst council i'm just reading it out for you recommendation of gst council are not binding on the union and state because parliament intended for recommendation of gst council to have persuasive value particularly when interpreted along with the objective of gst regime to foster cooperative federalism and harmony between the constituent units the parliament and state legislature possess simultaneous power to legislate on gst in terms of article 246a of the constitution hence recommendation of gst council are the product of collaborative dialogue involving union and state and they are recommendatory in nature not binding the government while exercising rule making power under the provision of cgst act and igst act it's bound by the recommendation of gst council that does not mean that all the recommendation of the gst council made by virtue of power given under article 279a 4 sub article 4 are binding on the legislature power to enact primary legislation so on this uh, recommendation of gst council a new perspective is being given all the recommendation of gst council cannot be binding on the parliament and state legislature of course these are recommendatory that is what being stated and observed by honorable supreme court when it was debated by the department that these notifications are being issued only on recommendation of gst council then question comes whether all recommendation of gst council are in line with the intention of gst provision and whether the delegated power are also in line 
as envisaged in the provision of the act. And that is what this judgment all about. An important one. This crux of this recommendation I have reproduced in that one page. Kindly check. Now having said that, the one important point I would like to draw here. We all know GST Council is a constitutional body which is being run by both centre and state. But who is having a major say? Today we are finding lot of you know things are being discussed and we have seen lot of confusion and differences which is coming out on public domain for what region? Now yes, I can say one third voting uh, power with the center, two third voting power with the state, and they can decide by way of three fourth majority. But lot of things are being discussed on consensus. That is very good part. Dialogue is happening, but still I'm finding there are certain issues. And this is one of the issues on which Honorable Supreme Court has made the observation that GST Council recommendations are not binding on the Parliament and State Legislature. Why such observation by Honorable Supreme Court while deciding a dispute of double taxation? Having said that, the item which I want to draw your attention, counter cell B2C. So I have, I'm running different poll on my Twitter and uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. And I tweeted one uh, poll on a, on a question, which is very important question. GST is a destination based consumption tax. It must accrue to a state where ultimately goods and services are being destined and consumed. In case of B2C counter sell, a Maharashtra customer coming to Delhi and purchasing goods, more than 50,000 rupees and taking it to the state of Maharashtra. So as per section 10, subsection 1, clause A of IGST Act, read with rule 46 sub rule e this would be interstate supply and sgst component of igst must accrue to the state of maharashtra whether it can be termed as intrastate whether you can levy cgst and sgst when the value of taxable supply is more than 50000 in terms of rule 46 sub rule e kindly read these are delegated power by way of rule are being drafted this is there but still these points are being debated in gst council and you can pick up the agenda of 37 gst council meeting where some of the state are saying it can continue to be intrastate and some of the state are demanding over and above 50000 it should be interstate challenge is name and address of the recipient unless it is being captured on tax invoice raised by the supplier for value of taxable supply more than 50,000 how you are going to determine intra and inter and whose responsibility is supplier responsibility why consuming state will not demand SGST component on this transaction and that is the debate going on and this matter is pending before the law committee. I am telling you in 37 GST council meeting this matter was discussed, matter is pending before law committee, provision are clear under section 10 subsection 1 clause A read with rule 46 sub rule E. Wherever value of taxable supply is more than 50,000, supplier must capture name, address, address for delivery, including state, name and code. So that GST component, SGST component must accrue to the state, consuming state. So why such uh, recommendations are being debated? And we are finding a lot of, you know, things are coming out on public domain. Well, lot of state are coming out and uh, they are making comment that our say is not being accepted, our say is not being taken duly under GST council. 
So this judgment giving observation that recommendation of GST council is not binding need to be looked into from broader perspective. We require uniformity. One nation, one tax, center and state has to come forward and there should not be any compromise. Just because some of the things we are having differences or interpretation issue and we cannot frame notification and we cannot frame any rule which is contrary to the provision of the act and how it can be endorsed that such rules, such notification are having a recommendation of GST Council. So we have to really look at the synergy of recommendation of GST Council along with Parliament and State legislating the law, GST law for creating uniformity for one nation, one tax. So this judgment is an eye-opener. Concluded portion, no IGST on ocean freight under RCM, reverse charge method. For CIF import, cost insurance freight import. Because freight component is already included in transaction value. For discharging custom duty including IGST. Let me conclude in a little Hindi also. Dispute ye tha ki IGST kya ocean freight ke upar under RCM lag sakta hai in the hands of importer of goods. Importer ka ye kehna tha ke jab maine apni custom duty including IGST pay ki to is ocean freight ko I transaction value include the transaction value in custom duty and IGST pay. If you ask me IGST on the freight component or ocean freight, ke upar, it amounts to double taxation. Department says that you get a credit. Taxpayer says that if I am in exam supplies, then what will happen? You credit. Nahi और फर्दर मैं अगर ओशन फ्रेट पे दूंगा जबकि मैं ऑलरेडी कस्टम ड्यूटी और आईजीएसटी पे करके आया हुआ हूं तो मेरी एकुमुलेशन भी कई बार होती है जस्ट बिकॉज़ मुझे क्रेडिट मिल जाएगा इसलिए मैं दे दूं क्या इंपोर्टर को आप डीम्ड रिसिपिएंट मांग सकते हैं अंडर आरसीएम जबकि आरसीएम रिसिपिएंट के एंड पे चार्जेबल है रिसिपिएंट कौन है जो फॉरेन सप्लायर है फॉरेन एक्सपोर्टर है उसने फॉरेन शिपिंग लाइन से सर्विस ली उसने फ्रेट कंपोनेंट फॉरेन शिपिंग लाइन को दी आपने डीमिंग फिक्शन क्रिएट कर दिया और इंपोर्टर को आपने रिसीपिएंट बना दिया अंडर नोटिफिकेशन 10 ऑब्लिक 2017 अंडर आईजीएसटी इवन कंपोजिट सप्लाई का जो कांसेप्ट है आपने उसके साथ भी छिड़कानी की टू और मोर टैक्सेबल सप्लाई इन कंजंक्शन विद ईच अदर Naturally bundled, that would be taxable on the basis of principal supply, which is supply of goods, which I have custom duty or IGST pay. This is the same dispute. The Honorable Gujarat High Court said that no IGST on ocean freight under RCM in the hands of importer. That judgment is being upheld. This judgment ko Honorable Supreme Court has agreed. Kar liya. एक बड़ा आर्गुमेंट उठा कि ये सारे नोटिफिकेशन जो होते हैं इसमें तभी इशू होते हैं जब जीएसटी काउंसिल रिकमेंड करती है तो जीएसटी काउंसिल की रिकमेंडेशन के ऊपर भी एक ऑब्जर्वेशन डाला गया कि बाइंडिंग है ऑन पार्लियामेंट एंड स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा इट इज नॉट बाइंडिंग हैविंग परसुएसिव वैल्यू फॉर लेजिस्लेशन ड्राफ्टिंग बाय पार्लियामेंट एंड द स्टेट and Article 246A कहता है कि आपको Parliament को और State को GST law draft करें which can provide the uniformity for one nation, one tax. So Article 279A GST Council को recommendation देने की पाबर देता है but that is not binding to create uniformity, center and state has to come together. ये सारी discussion इस Supreme Court के judgment में हुई है. मैंने कोशिश की कि इस जजमेंट को मैं आपको सिंपल 
लीडरशिप मैनर में प्रेजेंट कर पाऊँ एक पेजर मैंने डिटेल समरी बनाई है जो आपके डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में है आप डाउनलोड कीजिए एंड चेक इट आउट होप इस जजमेंट से आपको बहुत सी क्लैरिटी मिलेंगी इट्स ए गुड जजमेंट लैंडमार्क जजमेंट आई मस्ट से दैट एंड मस्ट रीड जजमेंट स्टे ट्यून लॉट मेनी थिंग्स ऑन माई फेसबुक ट्विटर लिंकड इन एंड यूट्यूब अगर आपको और भी कुछ अपडेट कुछ और चीजों पे भी जीएसटी में आपको क्लैरिटी चाहिए आई एम ट्राइंग माई बेस्ट लेट्स बी कम टूगेदर हम तो आए साथ सबका साथ सबका विकास एंड लेट्स मेक इट जीएसटी गुड एंड सिंपल टैक्स थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच